The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to lesson 107 of your distance learning session for Geology Opposite Science with Kenneth Yosimbon. Before we examine the content of lesson 107, we will correct the assignment we had during our last lesson, that is 106. That assignment required that we define applied geology and engineering geology. Two, that we should define geologic construction materials and outline three conditions that permit materials to be used for construction works. Three, outline three criteria for building dams and tunnels. This is an essay type question. It requires that you should express yourself and give some details. Applied geology, like we define, is the use of geologic knowledge and materials to solve different types of human problems, which are social, economic, and culturally related, that are associated with geological factors. Remember that the key element there is the fact that geological knowledge as well as materials are used to solve the problems of humanity, which are economical, social, and culturally related but should be associated with geological factors. Engineering geology is the application of geological knowledge to engineering problems. Engineering problems here or engineering related problems can involve building of dams, reservoir design and site location, and then tunnel construction. Geologic construction materials. That is the second part of the equation. Geologic construction materials are natural occurring materials out of which construction works are realized. Such, we have rocks, clays, and sand. Then, the conditions that permit materials for use in construction works. Say that that material must, you know, economically be favorable uh, uh, or should be able to adopt economical favorable geologic conditions at the site where they are being extracted. The grain size here will matter because fine grain materials will not serve the same purpose as coarse grain materials. Then the material should be attractive as well as should be abundant in the field. And uh, the structures should be present in order to ease extraction of that material. Then the material should be suitable and, of course, of less cause effect when it is being extracted. Remember that these resources are commonly non renewable. Now, site selection criteria for construction of dams and reservoirs. We establish the fact that they, it should be watertight or there should be watertight foundation and that 
the, uh, uh, the reservoir wall should not be able to permit uh, infiltration of water. Then, the rocks at the site where the dams and the reservoirs are being uh, constructed should be resistant, especially to weathering. The reservoir drainage rocks and overburden should be resistant to erosion. If not, the materials will be displaced easily. The reservoir or the dam foundation rock should be of the same type. It should not be characterized by you know, sedimentary rocks or even different types of sedimentary rocks or the jungle of sedimentary igneous and metamorphic rocks. It should be characterized by one rock type. The reason is because the foundation rock could be brought from elsewhere during construction of dams. Then conditions for construction of tunnels. For tunnels to be constructed, they must be constructed on very hard rocks, which means they should be rocks that are resistant to weathering. Rocks should be or should not be jointed because once the rocks are jointed, they will create disconformities and will cause the material to slip through such jointed areas. The area should be supported by extra materials, especially where the dam foundation will be made. Then, it should be drilled above the water table so that water supply, uh, uh, so that water supply should be a little bit distracted since it could, uh, the tunnels could be used as roadways or railways. It should be drilled on fine grain rocks so that it can be able to gain stability. Then the area should be free from sliding. It means it should be free from forks and joints. <laughs> We continue with our topic, Applied Geology. We examined already application of geological materials. We will continue today with economic uses of rocks. So, lesson 107 is titled Economic Uses of Rocks 1. We have two parts of it. We will treat the first part in lesson 107 and the second part in lesson 108. To evolve with our lesson, we will need to know those behavioral changes that are expected at the end of the lesson, that is, the lesson objectives. We also require information that will guarantee our understanding of the lesson on economic uses of rocks. Then we will come up with a real-life situation, carry out or cite some hypothesis. Then, carry out some learning activities in order to exploit the content of our lesson. We will have a recall, then come out with some application exercises, and end this lesson with an assignment. Now, objectives. You are expected, by the end of this lesson, to be able to outline the basis for classifying geologic materials for engineering works. You are equally expected to classify and characterize building stones. Information that is very, very vital as far as our lesson is concerned will involve knowledge from chemistry, knowledge from economics, knowledge from geography, knowledge from physics and mathematics, because the exploration met, uh, uh, methods of, of these materials will require effective mastery of physics and mathematics. We need knowledge from structural and denudational geology, knowledge from tectonics, we need knowledge from the different petrologies, that is igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary, and we need knowledge from fossilization and stratification geology, that is, historical geology. In our real life situation, we put a finger on this. Building stones are sound rocks, 
safely used in some situation in construction works as massive dressed or undressed units. Now, they are grouped for dimension stones, roofing stones, and ornamentation stones. We're taking all over again. Building stones are sound rocks safely used in some situation in construction works as massive dress or undressed units. They are therefore grouped for foundation stones, roofing stones, and ornamentation stones. Now the problem is, what are the conditions for grouping them as dimension, roofing, and ornamentation stones? These are stones that can be used for dressing or undressing and so on. We are talking this in terms of construction or engineering language. Now, will, that, will the grouping be based on availability, cost, strength, and durability as well as appearance of the materials? Or it will be based on the solid, loose, and the liquid nature of the materials? Or better still, on the concentration factor? Or should we base our attention on structures to ease extraction works? Whichever be the correct hypothesis, as we examine the content of our lesson through the different learning activities, we will come out with which of them is correct. Now, in our learning activity, again, we have a cross-section of rocks as well as minerals that are used in diverse ways. That is the illustration that announces that we still are concentrating on application of materials. But this time around, we want to fine-tune ourselves to the economic uses of rocks alone. So, materials suitable for engineering works. We already said that uh, during our lesson 106 that materials suitable for engineering works are characterized or are classified or are grouped based on the structural properties, based on the mineral characteristics, and based on the liquid properties. Now, based on structural properties, we have underlined the fact that mater uh, engineering materials can be grouped as building stones as aggregates associated to volume, quality, size, and shape of rocks. Take note, based on volume, quality, size, and shape of rocks, then we can have building stones and aggregates. Now, based on the mineral properties, we have all minerals, clay minerals, native elements, and fossil fuels. And on the basis of liquid properties, we have water with the ability to mix, with, uh, to mix well with construction industry products like cement and others. So, on the basis of the groupings, we will concentrate to treat only rocks. Remember that our focus is economic uses of rocks, one. Now, building stones, what are they? Building stones are rocks that can be safely used in some situation in the construction as massive dress or undressed units. This way, as massive dress or undressed units, they can therefore be classed into dimension stone. Dimension stone here, we mean foundation stone in reality. So this kind of material should be load-bearing and can be able to carry a lot on them without necessarily slipping through or without losing stability. Then we have a uh, roofing stone, which should be able to, you know, take a platform. And then we have ornamentation stone, in other words, dressing stone. Ornamentation stones are those ones that can be used in racing works. We will characterize it in the course of our lesson. Now we begin with dimension stone, also referred to as ammo stone. Dimension stone, also referred to as ammo stone. Now, dimension stones are those natural, rock, uh, uh, natural rocks quarried for the purpose of cutting and or shaping 
to a specific size. It means you can cut them into blocks or you can shape them into different sizes as required for engineering works. In different blocks, they can be used for foundation. In different shapes, they can be used for raising of walls or for ornamentation per se. Now, properties. Good, uh, properties of good dimension stones. Now, for rocks to be classified as good dimension stones, those rocks must be cheap, uh, cheap and attractive. You don't need to far fetch them. They must have crop in abundance. They need to be hard and durable before they can be able to stand the test of any loot put on them. Then they need to be rich in resistant minerals, like for example, you have quartz, you have muscovite, you have autoclase, those late state Bowen's reaction uh, uh, series minerals. Then they need to be resistant to fire. It means that they need to be fireproof by themselves so that in any incident, they can be able to withstand. Thus, rocks have to be quarried in large sizes and they need to uh, 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 be easy to dress. Examples of such rocks that we are talking about will include granite, limestone, and sandstones. We have a cross section of them that we will discuss the different characteristics and what they are used for because our topic focus is economic uses of rocks. Now, granite and granodiorite. These are rocks that are first of all attractive because they are made up of uh, ferric uh, minerals like quartz, ferrous or uh, quasophospatic minerals. They are attractive. They are rich in quartz, ferrous and few micas, especially the light micas. They are abundant in the field. It's easy to. The reason why they are abundant in the field is because the magmas that form them are a little bit sluggish. And those, uh, uh, those sluggish magmas will take their time to crystallize, so they will be formed adept. And in the case of any oblique, they are exposed or they are exhumed. They are jointed and easy to parry. They are easily shaped into different styles, and they are coarse grain in nature. They have, uh, they are heavy and difficult to cut into sheets. In other words, they can be able to withstand because they will not easily be cut. Then we have quartzite. Quartzite is rich in quartz, and then it is tough, and it is also made up of interlocking. Uh, 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 it has an interlocking nature in the way the minerals are oriented or in the way the quartz is oriented and it is coarse green and difficult to parry so it stands the chance for being a good foundation stone we have marbles marbles are easily cut into desired fragments remember that at one moment we are looking at a foundation stone that can be able to bear load at the other side, we are looking at foundations so that can be able to be shaped into different sizes. It is easily polished and attractive. Then marble is easily uh, attracted or attacked by acid uh, rain as well as uh, gases. And the pure varieties are used for sculpture. Then the impure varieties are used for internal decoration. Then we have uh, uh, nice or nices. Nices break into fragments. They are tough and strong, more attractive, easily broken into desired particles, as well as they are easily shaped into different designs. The reason why they can be good for ornamentation works or uh, 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 dimension stone works. Then we have some stone, we have braziers, and we have conglomerates. These are sedimentary rocks. They are plastic and massive. And then they are rich in quartz, first pass, and rock fragments. They contain silica and iron oxide cements. And they have low porosity. So for that reason, some of them will possess building 
or a bedding direction because there are sediments that would have been laid down through the work of sedimentation. Then we have limestone. This is a crystalline rock or a non-plastic rock and it is of course massive and it's rich in calcite and it's very attractive so it can serve the purpose for dimension stone. Then we have ammon stone. This time we emphasize that dimension stone could also be called ammon stone. We want to define ammon stone separately or give us some characteristics because it is dimension stone with uh, special uh, 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 qualities. Ammon stone is large blocks of stones placed around the base of uh, the, 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 uh, the base of the dock walls to take the force of waves. For example, when you get to the coast, you will see that there are barriers that are built. Those barriers that are built, the rocks that are used will portray the characteristics, generally what we will refer to as the armor stone. So, armor stone should be rocks that are used, or for rocks to be used as armor stone, they should not possess directional character. And then, these rocks should be resist or should contain resistant minerals. And most likely, they will include granite, limestone, and sandstone, just like we cited for uh, uh, dimension stone. That is why we are grouping them. Then, roofing stone. Roofing stone is stone cut either in giant slabs or in tiles. Remember the key words here, giant slabs or into tiles. Then you can, you can qualify the use for roofing stone. And then we have common examples like slates, shale, clays, and asphalt. Characteristics of roofing stone. They must be fine dense, and fissile. Means that they should be, you know, they should be easily uh, 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 quarried and along cleavage planes. They can be cut into thin slabs and they should be impermeable to fluids. They should be light and easily absorb heat. Then they should be easily shaped into desired uh, sizes. So the common examples that we, we know, we have slate, cheese, and filite. What are the qualities that make these materials uh, be roofing stone? First, they are foliated or they have foliated texture. So, foliation structures should be included as well. They are easily quarried and they are impermeable and are light. They easily absorb heat. They, easily, they are easily shaped into desired sizes and they, are easily, they easily slip along their cleavage planes. That is the quality they adopt for being roofing stone. Then, we get to ornamentation stone. What is it? Ornamentation stone is stone used in construction when pre-designed dimensions, either having or, uh, that is stone used in construction with pre-designed dimensions, either having loot bearing or decorative functions. Remember that they have two sides of them being qualified as dimension stone. The fact that they are loot bearing and the fact that they are decorative, they have decorative functions. Examples, you have basalt, you have andesite, and most likely we have volcanic uh, igneous rocks and most uh, fine grain rocks. The characteristics of ornamentation stone. Ornamentation stone should be compact and then fine as well as crystalline, contain crystalline structures. They should be free from cavities. They should be durable, hard, and attractive. They should be good, they should contain good fracture as well as they should be tough enough to be able to uh, 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 attain when heat to different sizes or to different shapes. We have basalt and andesite. Characteristics have high load bearing capacity. 
they are fine grain and they have polygonal joints. These polygonal joints facilitate their extraction. Then they are heavy and difficult to cut into sheets. If they are easily cut into sheets, then they become roofing stone. Now, root stone and ballast. Root stone and ballast. What is it? Root stone and ballast is, uh, will involve any type of stone product used as a construction material for building roots. This one is directed to building roots. Examples, you have shingle, you have flint, you have crushed stone. The properties of root stone and ballast, they should be fresh and tough. They should not be weathered materials. They should be load bearing. They should be angular with oxidized coating surfaces. And then they should have low polishing properties, as well as they should be fine to medium grade rocks. They should be resist, they should contain resistant minerals. Now for dolerite. Dolerite is fine to medium grade because it is a hyperbisal. Uh, basic igneous rock. Then it's dark and extremely hard and tough. Then it's easily quarried for construction uh, for crushed stone. Hornfels is another example. Hornfels is fine to medium grade and is tough. It's easily quarried for crushed stone. Then we have now, general uses of stones. We have seen the different characteristics of the stones under uh, dimension roofing and uh, ornamentation stone, as well as ammo and root stones. Now, what are rocks therefore generally used for? Remember, we are treating economic uses of rocks. One, they are used for civil engineering constructions. Secondly, they are used for construction of foundations and walls. They are used for flooring and roofing materials. They are used for damp and for damp proof uh, causes. And then they are used for phase works of buildings. And then they are used as paving of, or they are used in paving of roads as well as footpaths. Now, recall that engineering works. Uh, engineering work materials are classified into three groups based on structural properties, including building stones and aggregates, and mineral characteristics, including ores, clay minerals, native elements, and fossil fuels. Then liquid properties, including water, with the ability to mix uh, uh, construction products like cement. Building stones are rocks that can be safely used in some situation in the construction as massive dress or undress unit. They are classified into dimension roofing and ornamentation stone based on their availability, their cost, their strength, their durability, their durability and appearance. We'll get into some exercises. The first exercise, remember that as we go through the exercises, you should be able to give a strict answer to the problem we raised at the beginning of the, uh, the, the, the lesson. Now, fine grain igneous rocks like basalt and andesites are suitable as A. Decorating building materials. B. Crushed stone for aggregation. C. Roofing materials. And D. Head stones and facing on buildings. Our correct answer is B. Crushed stone for aggregation. Remember that they are fine grain. Now, two. Fine grain rocks are used as concrete for tarring of roots because. They are A, easily crushed, B, less expensive, C, they are load-bearing, and then D, they are easily transported. The right answer is 
see they are load bearing. That is why they can be used for carrying goods. They can carry the goods of any car that passes on them. Coarse grain igneous rocks are suitable as construction materials due to A. Their low cost effect. B. Their abundance in the field. C. Resistant to weathering. And D. Their ability to be easily quarried. The correct answer is D. The ability to be easily quarried makes them useful as construction materials. Four, polished slate is used for A. Inter uh, interior designs. B. Structural purposes. C. Industrial purposes. D. Chemical purposes. Correct answer is interior designs. That is why it takes the polish nature. Pure and impure uh, varieties of marble are respectively used for correct answer is C. They are respectively used for sculpture and internal decoration. Diatomite is primarily used for A. Filtration of drinks B. Feed additives for uh, livestock, elemental uh, phosphorus, or industrial and home uh, consumers. Correct answer is A. It's used for filtration of drinks. As assignment, you outline the basis for classifying geologic materials for engineering works. To classify and characterize building stone. Read more on the following text to understand and grasp more materials. We have come to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson will be on economic uses of rocks too. Manetambia ninja ne injo biayen.